me, he brought me this far to leave me. Ay, 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 ay. Thank you so much for listening to my song. This is Dorcas Chandler at DorcasGazelle.com. I hope you're having a wonderful life as I am. And I just want to come back and let you all know that um, I really appreciate you. I appreciate you coming and listening to my webcasting uh, tapes. And I know sometimes I ramble on and on, but you guys still stick with me and I'm grateful for that. Uh, last week we talked about fear and I want to continue that um, because I realized that we have to confront our fear and once we confront our fear I think for me anyway is that life gets better and some of the pressures and the anxieties that we have can um, be resolved once we confront it and when we confront it that means we deal with it head on and sometimes it's just those thoughts that are in our mind you know where the thoughts come from I I've, I've did a study on that and sometimes they're just coming from things that we have experienced in the past just like I said on my last um, broadcast uh, but we can't live in the past so I'm grateful for that you know that I have I'm Every uh, month I'm trying to work on a fear factor, something that I know that's bothering me or, or something that I'm afraid of. And one of the things that I was afraid of that I talked on my last broadcast was um, tables, getting up on tables in medical facilities because of what had happened to me. And I mentioned that in the last taping. Uh, so if you missed it, you can go and listen to it if you so desire. But what happened was, in order for me to face that fear, I decided to make an appointment and go and have this test done, DEXTRA scan, whatever you call it, uh, where I had to get on a table. And I was first very fearful because um, that night I could not sleep. I mean, I was looking at the clock, it was 2 o'clock, and then I was like, God help me. But I knew I had to face it. I knew that um, just because an incident happened to me that um, humiliated me, I mean humiliated me, that doesn't mean that every time I go to a facility, a medical facility, that people are there to humiliate me. And it doesn't even mean that the lady that did what she did to me was there to humiliate me. It's just that the way that the procedure was done, it was done improperly. And I should have spoken up, and I didn't. 
So I'm grateful for allowing me that experience because when I went to this appointment, it was totally different. God allowed me to get up on the table to take the Dexter scan, and I was very comfortable. Uh, I didn't have anxiety once I got there. Um, and I guess because I seen that the table wasn't as high as the other one. But what happened was when I had to get up on the table, um, I was able to uh, boost myself with my legs. And before, my legs didn't have a lot of strength in it. But because I've been doing exercise in the bed and been doing exercises, it was wonderful. So I'm just grateful for that. And I report to Victory because also when they called my name, I had asked them for a wheelchair when I called to make the appointment, but then I decided that morning I felt pretty good. I wanted to walk, and I didn't know that I was going to be walking as far as I walk. But anyway, it was a total blessing because it was showing me that I have more stamina in my body than I've had in time past. So I was grateful for that, and after we went through uh, my testing and then having my mammogram, then I walked back out and got back in the car. So I was really thankful for that. And then my friend says to me, she says, Dorcas, uh, we're going to breakfast, but we're not going to breakfast at your house. We're going to go out somewhere and sit down and eat. So I was able to go through the things that I went through and able to go out and just be out of the house and oh man, it was really, I just had so much fun that day. And so I pushed against the fear and I was very comfortable with doing it because now I can release that and move on to the next stage in my life. So I am very grateful for the things that I have been working on. And the thing, I gotta tell you this, um, when I went in to take my mammogram, you know, I was kind of tired my back from walking and stuff. And so the uh, technician told me, you know, you're going to have to stand up to take this mammogram. And I simply said, ma'am, I cannot stand up to take the mammogram. I said, if uh, I need to stand, that's okay. You know, I won't be able to do it. And she said, well, no, let's try with you sitting down. And she did. She was very graceful to me. And so I was glad that I was able to be clear with her instead of walking away uh, feeling bad like, um, you know, you got me standing up and I can't stand up because sometimes I'm arguing in my mind and all I need to do is be clear with what I need. And that's where I'm really trying to go in my life. And I talked about, about how that if we haven't been in the place of asking for help, it's different to ask for help when you have been the help. Um, and what I mean by that is sometimes some of us have just been the help. And I was talking about my dad. My dad was always our help. He always helped our family. But when he caught, when he had cancer, um, he was he got very belligerent. He was just really just irate with some of his behaviors. And and I was wondering what in the world has happened. And it was now that the uh, the roles were reversed that this man that always provided the help was now needing the help. And it was hard for him. It was hard for my mom also before she died. And so when I look back on that and then I'm looking at me, I understand it's not always pride. It's just sometimes that we have not understood what it's mean to ask for help when we've been giving the help. So a lot of my life, I've just tried to help people and I negated it or I didn't really pay attention to the things that I needed because I was so in, um, wrapped up in what everybody else need. And when you're, when you do that, that's dangerous because you, um, life changes and life shifts. And when life change and life shifts, then, um, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but maybe one day that you're going to need somebody to help you. And we all need people to help us. But sometimes it's that total dependence. I mean, it's not like, oh, thank you for helping me, giving me a basket. I mean, you got to totally depend upon this person because of health reasons. You can no longer do it yourself. 
that is a shift in the mind. And so um, when you don't understand that shift or not cognate to this can happen to us, um, it causes difficulty in our behavior, um, in, in, in uh, the way we treat people, the way we respond to life, the way we look at things, um, the way I dealt with my disabilities, uh, the way I felt about medical procedures, and people are not even aware where I was because not really, I wasn't aware where I was. I, I knew what I needed, but I didn't know how to ask for it because I was not the person that was always in a needed seat. Now, some people, really, they're just needy. Oh, my goodness. They need this and they need that. And they can't make it without someone helping them. Those people should have no problem when there's a shift. But then there's some people that just extend themselves to the max to help people. And, and then all of a sudden, you find yourself in a situation that you have no other resources than for somebody to help you. And then the mind starts struggling because the mind is not understanding what the body is needing. And, and because of our temperaments and the things that we learn behaviors, we can't adapt to asking people for help. And that's why I say it's not always pride. I don't want you to help me because I'm Dorcas. Dorcas, really get a grip. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. It's sometimes it's just simply because I've got a learned behavior that needs to be relearned. And that's where I'm working right now. I'm working on that. And, and, and I thank God for my disability and the things that I've been through because I believe that now what's happening with me is I'm able to share my brokenness, my hurts, my pains, the times that I went to bed crying because I thought that people did not want to help me. And it's not that people did not want to help me. People did not know the help that I needed. Wow. So now what I said when I sung this song at the beginning, I don't feel no ways tired. I put it on my computer, you know, I got a mixer and all this thing, and, and I kind of made it seem like I'm in a studio, and, and it sounds like an echo and everything, but I did it, and I sung it. I love to sing. I love to sing. I'm, and, and people that know me, I used to sing in a nightclub until God found me. And I tell you, I, I, I love to sing. I've always loved to sing. So I thank God because even though the things that I've been through, I don't feel no ways tired. And so that's what I want to tell us. Regardless of what we're going through in our lives, never give up, never, because God is on our side. And he wants us to make it. He wants us to succeed. And he wants the best for us. But do we want the best for ourselves? We got to come up out of pity. We got to come up out of self, this, that, and the other. And looking at people in the wrong manner. And look in. Look in. Changes from within. Who knows that when I name my youtube channel that i was really going to be dealing with changes from within because if you don't make changes from within you're expecting people on the outside to change and guess what they're not changing because they're having problems just like me and you so the only thing if you want success in your life i want success in my life then what i need to do i need to look in not only find the good in Dorcas, but find the things that I need to change with the help of God. We cannot change ourselves because we didn't make ourselves. So we have to go back to the creator, the one that has created us, and ask him for his help to change us. Oh, I'm excited about life. I really am. And I know there's going to be more roads ahead and struggles and difficulties and things that I understand and I don't understand and 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 I get it so I'm not on this um 
frenzy that life is good now. Life is good when we're going through our troubles and our trial and our tribulations. And I hope I can remember that. It's easy to remember when we're not in the fire. But when you get in the fire, it's a little bit different. But I praise God and I am believing God that no matter where I go from here, that I handle my life differently, especially with my thinking. And, you know, just always thinking, you know, because people say, you know, you're different, you know, and, and that used to just bug the life out of me. I am different and that's who I am. So whether you see it as a positive or a negative, I have to understand that Dorcas, you are different, but you don't have to take that in a negative connotation because really all of us are different. The only reason why you see the difference in me is because you can't see it in yourself. We're all different. You, you, it, it, what you're feeling is different from what you are, who you are, rather, excuse me. So that's why we can recognize differences. When I had my school, I had this program, and it was called Color Me Different, using coloring uh, crayons for the children, teaching them differences. Because if you're looking for somebody just like you, oh my goodness, I don't want nobody just like Dorcas. Lord have mercy. I just don't. And even though I love me, I'm coming into another relationship, love with God, love with myself, accepting myself, being who I am. Stop talking about how fat I am and this, that, and the other, and go on with my life. And I'm determined to change. I don't care what nobody else do. Right now, this is between me and God and change. I am working on Dorcas. When we came back from the doctor... Uh, we had to stop by the office to get a, a letter for my cable company. And it was taking forever. And I was sitting in the car, the air conditioning going and whatever. I live here in Arizona, so that's the only way. But when we got back to my apartment, um, it, you know, I said, wow, that took you a long time. Uh, my friend that was driving me. And, and then so when she got out and came around the uh, car, she said, you know what, Dorcas? I said, what's that? You are so impatient. Now, I remember the time I would have said, look here, let me tell you something. I didn't say it. You know what I said? I said, you know what? I am impatient. I said, but this is what I want to tell you. I'm working on it. You see, that's a difference. I'm working on being patient. In dealing with people, dealing with time. Because time bothers me. Let's change that around. Time used to bother me. I can only control the time that's allotted to me. I'm working on it. I can't control how you handle your time because most people are not brought up to even deal with time. It don't matter. They can tell you they'll be there at 12 and they'll be there at 3. That, that's them. But I have the option to tell you if you come at 3, honey, don't come. That's dealing with me. But these are things that I'm working. I am working on Dorcas. I, am, I mean it. I mean it from the gut of my soul that I'm working on me to be a better person. Even at the age of... Next month, going to be 65 years old. I'm excited. I don't know what 65 brings. I don't know if it's going to be tears or sorrow and laughter. I have no idea. But all I know right now is what God has done for me and what he's going to continue to do. And he'll never leave me nor forsake me, no matter what the trial is, no matter what the test is. Because, you know, I was going back and forth. I went and took those tests, and um, I don't know the outcome of them. And then that was coming in my mind, and I was like, no, 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 no. Whatever the outcome is of those tests, I'm going to be okay. That don't mean I'm not going to feel whatever I need to feel. That don't mean I'm void of feelings. That don't mean I'm void of uh, my emotions. That simply means that because I know that he brought me this far, he's going to take me on 
<laughs> to the finish line. Where is the finish? When I see Jesus. Hey, and I'm just excited, and I want you all to be excited about just looking at our lives and seeing, okay, what is it I need to change? I'm telling you, when you start working on your behavior and you start changing, oh, man, man, man. My weight, I'm, you know, it's still like at all. It just stuck, you know. But I'm telling you, I've lost more weight in my mind. Oh, my goodness. I've lost weight in my mind. There's been a lot of things that have hindered me. And I got my birthday party coming up, and I'm excited about that my dinner here at my house and um so my friend she said dorcas she called me she said could you get me some pictures of you and so i said yes yeah. so i sent her over the pictures um and then she asked me for one more and so i said oh okay she wanted one more of me being younger and so i took out my book that's here in my office and i started looking it through it now this is the uh, photo album that has the wreckage of my school and where everything is just in a, it's just tore up in my office. And the first time I looked in that book was 2015 when I had to face myself. See, when I say face yourself, accept yourself, transform yourself, it's not something that I'm just, just words. Honey, it's something when you got to face yourself, the reality of what has really happened. So that time when I looked at it, I think it was 2015, I cried and cried and, oh, God, why did it happen? And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went through all those changes. But this time when I was looking through the book, I, I was looking for a picture of me. And then I said, oh, this is this book. So then I come up on, the, on my school and I look and I said, oh, yeah. Thank God that I'm still alive. Thank God that there was nobody in that computer lab but me. Thank God that the children program that we have on Saturday, that they weren't running back and forth in that computer lab. Nobody got hurt. Thank God for that. And you know what? I'm still alive to tell my story, to help somebody else, to share my brokenness. What a great God we serve. Hey, I want you to know how special and how loved you are. And I just don't say that. I say it out of the gut of my soul because I remembered the road that I was going down when I just felt like, you know what, forget it. I cannot do no more. I didn't feel special. I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel cared for. I was wondering, God, where are you? Where is my family? Where is my friends? Can't anybody see that I'm drowning? But ah, let me tell you this. Right now, I'm walking on water. And that's because of God, I promise you. I am excited about the next phrase in my life. Not only Dorcas' life, but I'm excited about the next phrase in your life. We're triumphant. We're conquerors. Oh, yes, we are. We walk by faith and not by sight. Hey, this has been Dorcas Chandler at DorcasGazelle.com. I hope you've enjoyed the song that I sung in the beginning. I just felt like I needed to sing it because it's the sentiments of my heart this morning. You are special and loved by Dorcas. And if nobody have told you today you are love or I love you, I love you. Dorcas Gazelle at DorcasGazelle.com. That's funny. It's supposed to be DorcasGazelle.com. Anyway, be blessed and you all have a wonderful life. Bye-bye.